You need to figure out the goal, but you also need to figure out your constraint. So if your goal is aggressive sales growth, your constraint is profits. Mm -hmm. Because if you run after one, you need to know the opposite effect. And that's what we're saying here in the context of total A cost is, okay, if you run aggressively after total A cost, your constraint or you are kind of the other side of the coin is a decrease in your total sales volume, which you're saying like backtracks into profit changes, which is something that we should all be very aware of when we're trying to make changes to accounts. Hello everyone, welcome back. I am super, super stoked to have Mina Elias on the podcast today. And today we're going to be talking about ACOS and tacos, but maybe not exactly how you think. Um, we're going to be talking about how much really should you be paying attention to these as far as your absolute North Star of account health. Um, so I'm really, really excited to dig into this topic specifically with someone who knows their way around ACOS and tacos. I love it. I'm very, very excited. This is something actually that's like controversial, in my opinion, that I talk mm -hmm. about all the time. But every single client that we get, every single person that I talk to to advise, they're like, what's a good ACOS? What's a good tacos? All the software companies are focused on ACOS and tacos and things like that. And I still remember back in the day when everyone was focused on just ACOS. And then I started telling people that mm -hmm. ACOS is not accurate because we see affects organic. So you should look at tacos. And then I realized that the behavior of tacos makes it also not reliable as like metric to use to guide your efforts. And so now my North Star is profit. And I think that's mm -hmm. not going to change for a while. And the way that I look at it is basically it's like tacos and profits are on a bell curve. And just think of the X axis at the bottom being tacos. Mm -hmm. So the X axis at the bottom, it goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five to like 50, 100 tacos, percent tacos. And then the Y axis is your profit. And so it's your profit starts very low and it go as the tacos increases, profit goes up, 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 and it hits a peak at a certain tacos that we don't know. And then it goes down, 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 because now your tacos become so high until you're now break even or losing money. And that peak mm -hmm. point, no one knows where it is. You can't calculate it. There's no equation for it. And so the, the game for me is, okay, I'm going to test all these different tacos until I hit that peak point, which then leads me to the point of like, well, who cares what the tacos is? I'm basically chasing after one thing, which is that peak profit. And so that became mm -hmm. now our guiding metric is like, if we're increasing ad spend, we know it's for the sake of increasing revenue and we know we're going to lose profit. Mm -hmm. And then when we optimize and we want to hit that new, like new higher level plateau of profit, the only goal I'm looking at is profit. I'm not looking at ACOS or tacos. And I want to hear your opinion too on like, how do you look at ACOS and tacos? Yeah, um, I think that's a really good place to start off because, you know, a little bit we were talking about before we hit record on this conversation was, I mean, my opinion on the matter is it matters in the context. So I think why both of us have this issue, I think of blindly following ACOS and tacos. I don't think any of us are saying like, hey, you know, like throw out the metric altogether, like never look at it, never care about what it says. But I think it's what's the context of it. A lot of the reasons why advertisers will need to look at these things in context is because we've all seen this before. And I've audited quite a few accounts seeing this happen is someone says, okay, we need to get total A cost to X. And so therefore, honestly, if you're talking about it from strictly an ad perspective, the only thing you can do is lower ad spend. So someone goes in, they say, okay, you know, X percent of total sales volume right now is this number. So therefore that's my ad spend goal. And that would be correct if all you're looking at is total A cost and isolation. And if you had just your account and you didn't have to worry about market share or the market or what are your competitors were doing. So oftentimes someone will go in and they'll optimize and in a lot of cases over optimize. And what happens is that you significantly lose market share to your point of profits. Profit percentages, if there's a bigger percent, but it's of a smaller number, the end result is going to be a smaller number. So what ends up happening is although maybe tacos looks great, the account overall isn't that great. So when it comes to balancing out total A cost and how we look at it, we keep a really close eye on our total sales volume. Actually, I was doing an internal training today. We were talking about goals and I said, okay, you need to figure out the goal, but you also need to figure out your constraint. So if your goal is aggressive sales growth, your constraint is profits mm -hmm. because if you run after one, you need to know the opposite effect. And that's what we're saying here in the context of total A cost is, okay, if you run aggressively after total A cost, your constraint or you are kind of the other side of the coin is a decrease in your total sales volume, which you're saying like backtracks into profit changes. 
which is something that we should all be very aware of when we're trying to make changes to accounts. Yeah. And, and honestly, like for me, I feel like if all of a sudden the total ACOS number vanished and I couldn't calculate it for some reason, you know, just like, you know, hypothetically mm-hmm. speaking, it wouldn't impact anything at all because I would still have my profit metric. I would still have sales and I'd still have spend. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, we follow the exact same thing that you follow, which is cool. Our goal is growth. Right now we're doing a thousand dollars a week in profit. How much lower in profit are we willing to, you know, withstand for the sake of growth? And it's like, okay, you know, our floor is 500. So increase bids, launch campaigns, increase budgets, do all of these actions to get us to more revenue. Try going after new keywords and, you know, gain market share in places that we have low sponsored rank, low organic rank, low, you know, impression share in the search query performance report, stuff like that. And then as my ad spend goes up, I'm hoping my revenue will go up and I know that my profit will go down until a floor. And then it's like, okay, cool. We've hit that new level of revenue. Now let's optimize and earn the profit and benefit from it. And so we're lowering bids to things that didn't work out, adding negatives to keywords that didn't work out. Top of search or impression, like um, placement, uh, you know, the bid by placement. We thought like adding 50% to top of search was good because we were doing well and now it's no longer good lowering that stuff and taking all of these at, like kind of negative like actions to bring ad spend down maintain mm-hmm. sales the same and now my profit keeps going up and i'm going to keep taking those actions until the profit hits this inflection point and it starts going back down again and i'm like okay cool now i'm hitting the point of over optimization let's scale things back a bit let's increase things a little bit now that's we've reached the, our peak point in profit and let's maintain that for a few weeks to realize the the newer profit that we got and and I think that the scale and then optimize for profit plateau, scale, optimize for profit mm-hmm. plateau, that's where, you know, you scale, you hit a new revenue number, optimize for profit, hit, hit a new profit number, and then hold for a bit to get, you know, better profit. And in that hold for a bit, that's the best time, in my opinion, to look at click through rate and conversion rate and start optimizing for a better click through rate, better conversion rate, because while keeping everything the same and, and maintaining all of that profit, you have the opportunity to make even more profit by improving your conversion rate. And so for me, never in that entire journey did I have to look at tacos. So got to a point where I'm like, mm-hmm. guys, you know, I, we have clients all the time. It's like, our ACOS is too high. Our tacos is too high. I'm mm-hmm. like, too high? What? You want me to? I The only thing I can do is lower the bids and, and all of this stuff. Or you can get a better conversion rate and that's going to fix your tacos too. But again, what are we chasing here? Like, we're just trying to hit your peak in profit. Now, if you tell me I need 9% tacos, I'm like, okay, cool. Are you okay losing sales and losing profit just to hit that, like percent that sounds good in your head, the cost of, you know, profit. And so that's the struggle that I'm constantly seeing is people are, they only understand Ecos and Tacos. I'm like, we show you your profit every single day. Why don't you just look there and be like, cool. It looks like when we were spending this much, we had this much profit. Let's go back to that. Or let's try and, you know, drop spend. And it's like a, Makes sense, right? If I'm spending $100 a day, making $100 a day in profit, if I drop my ad spend by $10, the most amount of profit more that I can make is $10 because that's when he's going to come from there. Unless you go through a cycle of like, let's scale to 150, drop down to 120. And now we found some more profitable targets. So maybe now we're making $140 in profit, but that's where the money is going to come from. And a lot of people don't look at it like that. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. I think the difficulty with a lot of sellers is, you know, with the profit numbers, a lot of people just don't have the analytics to be able to look at it that way. I think for me, I don't think I'd be as bold to say that I would be able to do what I'm doing. And I think it's just the way that we look at it without the total A cost number. The way that we kind of approach the total A cost number is that it does kind of let you do really, I mean, not as good as you're saying, like, this is the actual dollar amount. So that's really how you should be looking at your account. But from an ads perspective, and because it is kind of the language of a lot of clients, it does kind of let you do like really quick and dirty profit analysis. So for instance, if you had like say 30% profit margins and our tacos is at 15%, well, 30 minus 15 is 15, 15% of the total sales volume gives you, again, these are rough approximations. So you definitely want to be using a profit calculator. That being said, like it does give you some relation of profits on the total account. I think that's why a lot of people have moved to using total A costs as sort of a guiding metric in lieu of A costs. Um, Cause I don't know if you see the same thing, but what we see is that a lot of 
of times there's an A cost focused target and then there's a total A cost focused target. And sometimes those two things are in opposition. So we had a particular client where we had a very like much more constrained A cost goals and they were very adamant about the A cost goals. But then there was also a total A cost goal. Um, and we ended up having a frank discussion that like, look, the market is getting much more competitive. So we can maintain this uh, A cost goal that you've given us and that's fine. We're maintaining it. However, what we're noticing and what they were noticing in their sales volume, we're like, look, we're really concerned that your sales volume isn't keeping up with the market. Like our market share is decreasing and we're seeing all these, you know, Chinese competitors come in. And because we have the constraints of the ACOS goals, we're not able to go after the targets that we really need to go after because we have this constraint. So are you okay with us maybe lifting or releasing a little bit on the ACOS goal? But what we're going to do is we're going to keep the total ACOS goal because we're tracking that back to profit. It's, that's the main reason. But hey, let's keep the total A cost goal in mind and let's optimize for that. So what we've done is now we're achieving the total A cost goal. The A cost goal is we're only running, I want to say it's like five points above where we were before. So it's not even a significant jump in the A cost. But what's happened is we're able to keep up our market share and sales have grown because we're in peak season. So we're like sometimes releasing one of these. And if I had to give up one, I'd definitely give up the A cost over total A cost. Yeah. And, and the thing that drives me nuts I also think a cost is just completely unreliable. It's like, I feel like it's a wrong number. It's not a real number. It's almost like your weight and like your weight taken like in the middle of the day. It's like, okay, well, your goal is to like lose body fat, for example. So measure your body fat because your weight could be, you know, higher or lower because you're holding more water or have less water or you ate or you haven't gone to the bathroom for Amazon, like Ecos, it's like, I know for a fact that this campaign has $100 and spend $150 in sales, 75% Ecos seems high. If I pause that campaign, I'm losing more than $150 in sales. I might lose $300 in sales, meaning that the Ecos was actually 33%, you know, but I can only find that out by turning this campaign off and losing the $300. And we've done that in the past where clients have come in and they're like, we need to fix this uh, campaign. And then they'll say, you know, are you guys dumb? Like this campaign's 80% ACOS. I'm like, it's driving so much sales. It's probably the ACOS number is probably not right. They're like, I went ahead and paused it. And then next thing you know, oh my God, my sales are down. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, yeah, because Amazon only reported, you know, whatever, like you're spending $300 and it reported $450 in sales, but it actually was driving 800. But there's a flaw in Amazon's attribution model. So that's just what I've seen anecdotally. And you can test it. Anyone can go home and do this. If you don't believe me, do it with something that has $20 in sales, go do something that has $300 in sales or $500 in sales, pause that campaign and see if your sales drop more than the PPC sales are. And if they do, yeah, you're going to keep chalking it up to, okay, well, maybe I lost organic rank or maybe I did this, maybe I did. I'm like, okay, but anyways, if you kill at a certain campaign with a certain ad spend and you lose more than what it reported as sales, then there's sales that's not being reported that can be attributed to that campaign. And so that's why I use iteration. I'm like, okay, cool. If the ACOS is high, I'm going to drop the bids a little bit. But if I drop the bids and I notice that total sales are starting to take a hit and my tacos is starting to go up, I'm like, okay, this was, it's reporting 85% ACOS, but this was the wrong move. I'm going to push it higher. I'm going to go to 95% ACOS and then we'll see that my sales go up. And so that's the thing that kills me about ACOS is how unreliable it is as a metric, just because the data that's being told to you is almost like a lie. It's like, you know, you're getting like someone's coming to you and saying, hey, you know, Hey Elizabeth, here's a report on how your campaigns did. And then you go and you double check and you're like, this is wrong. And this is literally like what's happening. Yeah, it does. It is true that ad console, like there is issues with looking at ads in isolation. And I think that's what kind of like we're both saying. I've had those conversations, like I really wish I've had clients ask, and it's not a bad question. It's can I get total A cost reporting on a per keyword level? And I'm like, I would freaking love that. I would love that if I could figure out what the sales attribution was definitively to the cent for this specific keyword that we're running. And then I could then do the calculations and simply add spend divided by total sales on that one search page, then I could give you total A cost on a per product level. It's just, it's not, or on a per key level. And then you could really define, okay, so how much is this one keyword actually driving? What we're saying is that A cost, it's only going to look at your ad spend. I mean, like we still go after a particular A cost metrics, but the thing is, if you look at very isolated bits and pieces, so for instance, a ranking 
keyword. If we're pushing a keyword specifically to drive ranking, you would expect the A cost to be higher. And honestly, it's just a function of the increase in the cost per clicks. It's not even necessarily that the keyword is bad or it's not converting. It could be driving significant sales. The amount you have to spend on that one keyword to maintain the visibility that you need to to be able to drive the ranking is going to be significant. And so therefore, if it's ad spend divided by ad sales, if the ad spend is high due to the increase in cost per click, it's just going to be high. And so what we're saying is like, if all you're looking at is this one keyword has significantly high A cost and therefore because it has high A cost, it doesn't work. I'm a big fan of like, hey, let's look at the context and let's look at things as a whole instead of an isolation. So do I necessarily want to run all of my campaigns across the entire product at like, you know, like you're saying 70% ACoS, 80% ACoS, maybe not because there's probably some targets that aren't worth 80% ACoS to me. Like if it's a low bid auto, that's probably not worth 80% ACoS to me. So therefore it makes sense for us to optimize that and bring it down. However, if the goal is ranking and to get ranking, we need sales velocity and to get sales velocity, we need high top of search placements. Well, then the requirement is for me to hit those high cost per clicks, which we already established. That's why the ACoS cost is high is not necessarily because other things aren't working. It's the market cost is what's driving it up. So there are ways for you to like balance out the account, meaning some things are less significant. So you're not spending as high and then some things are much more significant. And so those things are running high, but then your overall balance becomes much more sustainable. And then if you get back out to your case and like looking at actual profits and making sure that those things are on point, then that allows you to open up the possibilities a little bit more. And I think that's where a lot of us ad managers are trying to balance in how competitive the market is being right now, right? Like cost per clicks on some, like we had a client, they were just trying to rank and it's like post prime day cost per clicks are ridiculous. So we're trying to like gain back momentum for some product. We're like a week ago, this was a $3 cost per click top of search. Today it's $5 cost per click top of search. And it's not like we didn't do that. There's nothing wrong. It's like the market is moving so quickly and so aggressively. We're hoping it's going to come down. But right now, if that, if we want to gain that placement, and that's the cost that Amazon's requiring of us. So you either learn how to balance out the account or you are just okay with doing those things to your point of increasing the top of search to gain more momentum, to get higher sales volume, and then making sure that backtracks into your profit margin. Yeah, and and one thing that I also like to kind of like consider is I love that you brought up this point of like, that's like this, it is what it is almost like this is the market, right? So you are a 70, 80% ACOS, you know, even though like, like we said, ACOS might not be the best metric, but like you, just for the sake of this example, you're running a keyword campaign and you're a 70, 80% ACOS. Like what can you do? And and I think Helium 10 Atomic has this tool now where you can look at your bid changes and you look, you can look at, you know, your spend and your ACOS and your rank at all of the different bids. And so it's like, okay, maybe in, if in position four, I have an 80% ACOS and position 12, I have a 72% ACOS and position 16, I'm not making sales. What are you going to do? Would you rather not make sales? or be in position, you know, 12 or be in position four. And, and then because it also is a function of how many sales you're getting at each of those positions. And then at that point, you're like, okay, this is the best that I can do. Like you're limited on options. It's not like we're going to do a magic wand. You have certain positions and you perform at each different position. And it's like, do you want position four, thousand sales, 80% ACOS, or do you want position 12, 72% ACOS, uh, $350 in sales, or do you want position 16, zero sales and, you know, zero ACOS. Mm-hmm. If you want to get your ACOS up or your ACOS down and your profits better, then get a better conversion rate. Go from a thousand to 5,000 mm-hmm. reviews and then all of your ACOS start going down. And so also this is the second piece of it is PBC only brings people to your listing. That's it. They're And they're bringing it through a keyword. So they're just bringing people to your listing. And again, it is what it is. They convert the way that they want to convert. You can go maybe a step deeper, look in the search query, performance report and see which keywords you have a better conversion share on and worse con- and conversion share. And you can at least have that guide some of your efforts be like, okay, if my ACOS is 80% and I have a relatively better conversion, you can, you can neutralize your conversions across all the keywords, but you know, don't take ones that, you know, barely convert like MMA nutrition hydrolyte will co- have a 35%, uh, you know, a conversion share. So exclude those keywords and maybe go for all of the keywords that have a certain number of conversions or more. And then, 
take the best and then divide them all by the best and you kind of see relatively which one has the best conversion versus which one has the worst. And if you have a higher conversion share for those keywords, you're like, okay, I'm willing to withstand 80%. If you have a very low conversion share on a keyword that has 80% ACOS, maybe it's worth dropping it. And then again, at the end of the day, it is a, it's very closely a function of your conversion rate. And so if you're unhappy with your ACOS, the fastest way to have that ACOS is double your conversion rate, you know, reviews, split test your creatives. I mean, if we're, if me and you are working every single day on people's ads, driving traffic, all these different keywords, testing different things, why aren't you spending every single day improving your listing, testing different creatives, testing different selling points, testing different main images, which will enhance your click-through rate, which will balance out your ads. Because if your click-through rate doubles, you go from a 0.2% to 0.4%. Initially, you have a, a thousand sessions, for example, 500 paid, 500 organic. Next thing you know, you have double you know, the organic sessions. You can always control your paid sessions, right? If you notice your ad spend is higher, you can drop it down. So it remains the same. And now you have a thousand or organic sessions, 500 paid, or let's say it goes up to 600 paid. And relatively now you're getting a better uh, return on your ad spend because there's more organic sales because of, there's more organic traffic because it's a better click through rate. So those are a lot of the things that are very closely married to PPC that again, they limit us. It's like, oh, get a better ACOS. I'm like, okay, can you double my conversion rate? Can you double my click through rate? You know, it, I can get you a better ACOS mm-hmm. much faster. And then that wish of tacos at a, at a keyword level. I mean, it would be amazing. And I feel like at some point we'll have something like that. I mean, cause if we have the search query performance report, we can see the number of conversions that came in from every single keyword. We can see the ad spend that we had on every single keyword. I'm sure that we're going to get closer, but then tell me this, what happens to the person who types in electrolyte powder, clicks on my product, types in electrolyte, you know, supplement, sugar-free electrolyte powder, clicks on that one and then converts. Who's getting the attribution here? And that's where the model will never be perfect because it's human behavior and there's multiple clicks. So unless we are able to see every single action this person took as it relates to his or her journey purchasing an electrolyte powder. Do you know how much data Amazon would have to store to release that? They're going to be like, why are we going to arm you with this? It's it's too much. Just spend more money. (laughs) <laughs> so it would be way too much analytics to your point. And then also it would give away a lot. Like at some point, like Amazon's built the system. It's not within their best interest to release their actual, they know how many user ads are on there. They know how many users are shopping, when they're shopping, where they're shopping. It is not within their best interest to release that, nor should they. Yeah. I mean, that's very proprietary. Yeah. And what you're saying is I feel like our job as marketers, to your point of where do you convert best, what works best, is to make better decisions as to what we're going after. Because I think we've all had that like, oh, this is the main keyword, so therefore I should go after this. And Well, in some cases, it's true. In other cases, the amount of spend and consequently profit loss that you're going to have to endure to go after that to even possibly maybe rank because your conversion rate is not as competitive is not going to be worth it. So the question a lot of times is, I mean, like I found out, tell me, like, I don't know how you view it, but it's not really like, oh, how do we make this one thing work? Because sometimes, again, we're fighting against the market. We're fighting against lower price competition. It's really, really difficult. It's, okay, where do we work best? And where can we play a more sophisticated game to your point of looking at search query reports? Where do we convert best? Where do we have a fighting chance? And where are our ad dollars best spent? Yeah, and honestly, it's all hypothesis too. It's all like, okay, we look at the search query performance report and we come up with this hypothesis. I think because we convert better on this keyword and our organic rank and sponsor rank is low and we have a smaller impression share. If we bump up our impression share, hypothetically speaking, this is my hypothesis, we should get more sales. And then you go and test it. But it doesn't always work out like that. And I feel like honestly, a lot of the times the ads game is almost like a game of Jenga where you're just like touching, 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 and you're seeing which one moves because at the end of the day, you're trying to push ad spend as much as possible profitably. And so you're like, where can I push the limit with a keyword and get it to spend more and more and more and make more sales profitably, but then not too much where the whole thing collapses, uh, but not, not really, but you know what I mean? You go from profitable to not profitable. And so it's a very iterative and it could go from you're very profitable, you're not profitable anymore because 
you're at $29.99 and all of a sudden four of your top competitors decide to drop their price by $5 and you didn't catch that. And now you're down there. Or you went from a 4.3 to a 4.2 star. And you know, again, everything that was running amazing and profitable, all of a sudden, 90% of that stuff is not profitable at the position that you're in. You have to drop your position. So it's very like iterative and you know, you're feeling what's going on and, and reacting to it and, and just making hypothesis. Like, you know, I think this would work. Let's test it. Yeah. I mean, the way we kind of navigate that, because I think probably some listeners are going to listen to that and be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, now I just feel like, what the heck am I even supposed to be doing? Is it even worth it? Which I say it definitely is. But at least the way that we navigate it, and I'm sure you guys have ways, You, I know you have very like sophisticated analytics that you all are looking at on a daily basis. But the way we navigate it is kind of like by zooming out a little bit, because I think the actually the brands that I find do the work first and the brands that I find you the best are the ones that are looking in longer time horizon. So I think while you should be tracking your daily profits and you should be tracking things, like you want to know what's happening because like to your point, things move so quickly, you need to be able to react very quickly. But I think sort of with looking at things so intently comes this wanting to sometimes overreact quickly and really screwing yourself. And so I find that the brands that do the best are the ones looking in longer time horizons and going, hey, we're noticing this trend. So therefore, what can we do to navigate it, right? They kind of rise to the challenge and they see everything in like trends and they recognize like market changes or seasonality. So for instance, if you were doing Prime Day, right? Right before Prime Day, going into Prime Day, conversion rates are garbage. Like everyone's conversion rates garbage. Everybody's waiting for those sales to hit. And so if all you do were was looking at those days, you would be like, oh shoot, conversion rates are down. All of my sales just plummeted for the last two days. So therefore I need to get on this right in. So the more seasoned brands are assuming out like, nope, tomorrow's prime day. We don't need to spend ads right now. We know that this is happening. So therefore we're going to relax and breathe and ride the wave. And then we're going to position ourselves well going into prime day. So to your point of like analytics and looking at things, like what should you do about it? Like definitely be looking at things on a micro level because that's where you figure out what changes you need to make like on keywords or how you need to adjust, but then also start looking at a little bit bigger macro level to be able to smooth out those bumps of like those crazy day-to-day -day ways. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you know, to your point, if anyone's like, okay, give me some like actionable stuff, this is what I would do. First of all, like Elizabeth said, start tracking profit and track it on a, a week by week basis. I would say like seven days is, is a decent amount. Then step two is pick a goal. You're either going to try and scale or you're going to try and optimize. Don't change things at the same time. And then pick the actions for whichever one. So if you're scaling, you know, increase bids, increase budgets, launch new campaigns, increase bid by placements, and then wait and look at the act. Like this, your hypothesis was if I change these things, then my revenue should grow and with a constraint of my profit. So track that when you hit your constraint, that's when you stop. Then the second goal or, you know, the other goal would be, okay, I want to optimize for profit. And again, like think about it realistically, how much are you spending right now? How much is realistically speaking, can you cut? Okay. I'm spending 300 a day. I can probably go to 250. Uh, okay. So now lowering bids slowly from the ones that you hypothesize are the ones that are not doing well, adding negative keywords that are spending money, not making sales or the ecos is too high, dropping down that bid by placement and then looking at your profit and saying, okay, I'm going to wait until it hits the peak. And what's the peak that I can get at $250. And that's it. Like that would be the takeaway of this whole conversation, in my opinion. Yeah, no, definitely. Test things, iterative, keep track of your numbers and be able to look at things again in the micro as well as the macro. And you'll be able to ride this crazy Amazon wave oh, yeah. for a long, long time. Definitely agree. So, I mean, I really appreciate you coming on here. This has been a very riveting conversation. I'm sure it has made a couple people think about things a little bit differently. So super, super appreciate you coming on. If somebody wanted to know where to find you, where would they do that? Yeah, so LinkedIn, my name is Mina Elias. I'm some good stuff there. Also Instagram at the Mina Elias or visit the website, which is triviumco.com. Yeah, I'm pretty accessible. Ask me questions. If you have any questions about this, I'm happy to. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, we'll definitely put all the links in the description.